So this has got quite a dogmatic title, State Machines Done Right. I don't actually even believe that title, but you know, it got me, it got me through the uh, selection process. So. Um, but essentially, these are a couple of simple techniques. So we, we're going nice and, nice and easy to ease everyone in. Nice, nice easy stuff. Blah, blah. I'm going to whiz through this because I'm going to try and get some time back. Our giants are female, Karen Jones Spark. This, this is primarily about language and language with regard to design. And she applied a lot of the rules that you do with your textual searches in Google and the like. A lot of the rules are based on this. And it's, she does a couple of interesting videos. Uh, and she's a star. So the point of this, show some appreciation of state machines, describe the types, describe the importance of transitions, describe the importance of transitions, describe the importance of transitions, demonstrate how language affects design, and talk about the future a little bit, if I get time. Time is cool. Um, I've asked this three times now, and nobody's given me an answer, so I'm not even going to ask it again. And you're all in the dark, so I'm not going to pick anyone. I've got the wrong glasses on. Anyway, it's not Alan Turing. <laughs> Was it the answer I was expecting? So I did some research. Got to run now. Hold on. This is my research. No, nope, forgot to bring it. Oh, no, I didn't. There we go. Did some research. Uh, this is all foundational stuff about sequential machines. And in 1928, Russian fella comes out with, um, with this. And it's all to do with um, telecom circuitry, essentially. And it's all to do with reducing the complexity of telecom circuitry, uh, circuitry, because it was expensive. So next you get the Turing machine in 1936. Um, but more interestingly for us, you get onto a Mealy machine in 1955. Bell Labs, telecoms. More. Bell Labs, telecoms. <laughs> okay? So people get really bent out of shape about the differences here between these two different state machines. And it's another one of these slightly religious arguments. It's for reducing electronic circuitry. It's not for software. So the, a lot of this interesting stuff is, is to do with electronics and reducing circuitry. So, that's what I just said. So, the actual real software engineering aspect to it is um, David Harrell uh, did his charts, which then came in and became the UML state charts, which probably... I mean, I tend to just use the more one because I'm simple, simple. But if you're more complex and you like a bit more complex, this allows you to do a lot more. It allows you to do actions. It allows you to do uh, hierarchical state machines. It's actually quite good. And, and in, in this world where things need to be asynchronous for some bizarre reason, then you can model it with this kind of thing a bit better. So it has its place. It's worth knowing. Very sensible. Makes sense. I'm a dimwit. I don't want to get into complex stuff. If I have to learn more than three things, I'll get bored. So my state machines have a termination, a state, and a transition. And that's it. And the point of a, having a diagram in a diagrammatic language is purely so you can go and show that diagram to people who don't care about diagrammatic languages. Or just to make your headspace a little bit easier. Just to save a bit of time. That's all. So again, don't get bogged down. Do what works for you. <laughs> Current examples of the type of thing you're taught when you're taught state machines. They're not. So the thing that's missing in the, in the last diagrams really is a description of transition. So you, you make your state transition diagram. You've got your state. You've got your arrow. And an arrow is your transition. That's important. So for us, we get a lot of value from doing this. All we do is, I'm going to do some leaping and pointing. All we do is we have a wrapped up queue at the top, which is our transition queue. 
So we go into our state, which is something, and it waits for that reference to come out, and it could be one, two, three, four, or ignore, whatever. And that's essentially what we're doing. But being able to have that transition described as a separate thing now makes that state transition diagram that you use mean something. So if you were at the course yesterday, you heard me wittering on about this. Uh, simplicity is related to language. Uh, and language drives design. Uh, it's, it's something we tend to fall away from. But when you're looking at a block diagram, I know it sounds peculiar, but you're reading that block diagram into words. And those words lead your design. Uh, and in this particular case, I have other theories on this. I think, and I've, this is a recent change in me, in the way I've done it, probably about a year or so ago, um, states should be doing something. It should be the present participle. So idling, not idle. Waiting and connecting. And that change is made some very subtle changes into the way I design my code and the way I feel stuff should go into the state. Um, because it's, you can, you can actually look at it and go, oh, everything idling should go in the idling state. It's, it's not just sat idle. It's, it's a real subtle thing, but it has actually made a difference. Transition should be an imperative verb, you know, a command, essentially. You know, connect, stop, disconnect. So state should be cohesive. The same as module should be cohesive, state should be. Should be doing one thing. Should be described in one simple sentence without logical connectives. So if you've got an or or an and or a I don't know, whatever, I can't think of any more. <laughs> Um, logical connective in your sentence that's describing the states, well, it should be two states, or three states, or however many logical connectives you've got. And transitions should be simple commands. And the best way to use diagrams is to match them as closely as possible to the source code. That's, if, you're, if you've got a diagram and it doesn't match, it's kind of a waste of a diagram. If you can't actually look at it and say, ah, oh, that's the code, I understand the different aspects. So, standard example, I copied off of uh, Normsky's TLB example. So, uh, he does a car wash. And there's a state machine for a car wash for me. And again, like I say, I just use the standard. You, you would say that's a more, but nothing in software is a more state machine. And me being an idiot, I then spent an hour or so making the car wash look like a car wash. Woo! So I'll just demo it because I like software. Boop. Vroom, 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 vroom. So I'm waiting there and I've played. So you can see now it's gone through its test. It's waiting for token states at the top. I press did it. Now the car can be driven in. Do do. Off she goes. Room, 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 room. I've got other stuff like I can throw errors and stuff. But yeah, I won't do that. But you can see it's brushing and it's applying. It, it's all nice and Englishy, and uh, for people who are not Englishy, it's foreign languagey. <laughs> do it yourself. <laughs> Try that. There you go. So, and the code is what the code is. I quite like banging the little state machine there. But, and that's all the code is checking, completed. So, anyway. This is why I cock this up and I have to go through my slides really quickly. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, demo? No, seen that. There's the code, seen that. Ah, I've got to get through in seconds. Oh, I'm not taking questions, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> just, just, just to preempt this, so you can talk to me out there. Because after this, I relax. I have nothing more to think about. So. <coughs> huh? You have something else to think about the car. I don't think of the car. That's just action, that is. So anyway, the point of the exercise, the bit I like about the way I do it is 
that essentially I can hack each state to act in a way that I quite like. So I'm not, I'm not rigidly enforced to follow any paradigm I can. So here's a reasonably standard one. It's waiting for the, you know, it speaks for itself really. You, it sets up the display for that state. So state machines work quite nicely with wizards. So that could be setting up the tab that is visible to you. That's just waiting for the car to enter, and it then tells, fires a transition when it finishes, and that transition is either completed, I've timed out, it's been cancelled. And because of the way I've encapsulated that, those transitions could be fired any old way, which is, depending on your point of view, either a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's a good thing, because I like firing things everywhere. The other typical type of state you can have is it's waiting for a token, so it's sat there and I'm waiting. So you could do this one or two ways. You could either have a loop, so that's just going around internally in the state, or you could set that time out there, drop it out, come back in again, and keep polling the state like that. Uh, so again, I quite like the flexibility of doing it like that. It's quite useful. Question I get asked is, oh, can't I use events, user events? Yeah, you be you. Whatever, whatever works. But transition is the important thing. It's, it's model the transition. Where people go wrong, I uh, rescue quite a lot of software in my time. And the biggest thing that people do in LabVIEW is they put everything everywhere. Uh, and you need to try and limit yourself. So what do I mean by that? So event structures. Generally, when you go into an event structure, you want to fire a transition, get out. Event structures work really well if you don't hang around in them. So all of our software, we queue up our user interface. Everything that updates the user interface goes through a queue. Same applies. All it does is update the user interface, get out. Don't do anything else. State machine, or the state, everything goes in there. Every single thing you can squeeze in that damn thing goes in there. And what it means is you, you're not dicking around trying to control this vast load of loops and globals and data and notifiers and semaphores and all this sort of things that people try to do to, to try and control the top level of a LabVIEW program. You, you, you kind of just all makes it quite single and easy, simple and easy for you. I honestly didn't understand what a race condition was when people were, oh, race conditions are terrible. And I really, for years, I'd never known <laughs> what a race condition was. <laughs> I, was I looked at it, I thought, people write software that does that? And that's, again, it's putting everything everywhere is where you get race conditions. Some oft forgotten states. They are, I can be posh. Uh, again, when you model your state transition diagram, erroring, your system is erroring, that's, that's a state. Do a lot of safety systems, well, let's stick safely exiting, that's a nice one. That way uh, your nuclear reactor is going to shut down nicely when, it, when you press stop rather than... Um, damn, this is good, good job I'm not answering question. I've put us right back on time. 15 minutes this is. So. I will talk about this a bit. I might even show a video and use up all my time. So I've got a funny feeling, and, I, and I, when, one day I'll get to it, that you can actually, what, what I would quite like to do is on the block diagram model the state machine so it looks a bit like a state transition diagram, and it looks like that. I think you could possibly use transitions or channel wires as transitions, I think. And I still haven't 100%. When I, when I was first shown channel wires, that was the first thing I thought is, I don't know, I think you can model transitions for these babies. And so I, I, one day, when I've uh, actually got time, and customers who don't want to pay me, I will, uh, I will sit down and do that. The thing I'm most excited about is, and it's a flight of fancy, <laughs> this is just a request really, is something uh, Jeff Kodowski, uh showed as a concept or as an idea at the CLA Summit, which was Semantic Zoom. Now, what I want is, and this just doesn't apply to 
state machines, this applies to actually all diagrams. You could have all sorts of things. But from a state machine point of view, I want to put a graphical object onto the next gen, because uh, it won't happen in Courage, onto the next gen block diagram. And I want to click on that graphical object and then seamlessly, as if by magic, it go to the next block diagram. And I could even, if you were being really generous, you could give me some rules that I could apply around the outside, an API perhaps, which, which would fire the eyes that would go in. Yeah, give me that. Oh, I could do all sorts of shit with that. I could, I could. Uh, so you could, I mean, you could do state transition diagrams then. They're actually part of the block diagram. I'm not going to a toolkit, which would be wonderful. I have said this before, I'm a block diagram fundamentalist. I, every time you make me go to the project, it pisses me off. Every time I have to search for a list of things and I, I'm not on the block diagram, that pisses me off. Just leave me in the block diagram, give me the tools to zoom. And it, you don't even have to make it so it actually does it, it just needs to look like it's doing it. <laughs> that's, that's how simple I am. Um, yeah, so I rushed away and I did a video, you can look it up on YouTube, of, of what I thought it was. I used Prezi, which is a very good, um, it's a presentation tool that does the sort of zooming in. Uh, and it's, to my mind, people and I, go look at Prezi, because that's how I think you can, you can do these interactions and these smooth sort of movements and zoom ins and zoom outs. And it would be so cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to stick with my word, I'm done. Other things to do, so I don't model actions. If you like actions, I think TLB does. You need to do TLB prime, prime uh, TLB prime, <coughs> you forgot the look, prime. We have two versions. Well, we shouldn't have two versions then, should we? That's caused confusion. <laughs> and I, oh, who said that? <laughs> um, stands, stands here. Uh, he's, he's done again, he's done uh, hierarchical state machines. Again, interesting. There's stuff that's interesting out there already. Um, but for me, if somebody gives you a state machine and they don't model transitions, it's not a state machine in my mind. The, the, it's not as, as it ought to be. It's not as complete as it ought to be. What are you doing, Fat? That's it, I'm done. And I'm not going to claim the time to ask questions. I'm just going to give the time back to the conference because that's how cool I am.